There's a lot to the Fruits Basket anime. They cast likable characters with messed up lives, the emotional moments from their pain and triumphs, the way the supernatural elements weave their way through the very human story. But the thing that ties it all together, and the thing that I want to talk about today, is the show's mess. What the show is trying to tell the viewer. This will also get into spoilers for season one, since I want to talk about specifics. Though if you want a spoiler-free breakdown, check out the video that I did a week or two ago on the show. So, the show starts off with Toru, and from the very start, she is an extraordinary person, and due to the various reasons she cannot stay with any other family, she lives in a tent. But despite her life not being good, she still embraces it. She takes the challenge head on, and does the best she can. And well, Toru is just amazing here. I've said before that I want to be more like her. When life sucks, and it does for everyone, you have a choice to make. You can either lament and feel bad for yourself, or you can get up and keep fighting, in whatever way that is. There's a time to be sad and mourn the loss of a loved one. But what are you going to do next? What are you going to do after being dealt another blow from life? What are you going to do when life just plain sucks? Are you going to just take it, roll over, not do anything? Or are you going to get up and do the best you can with what you have? That is one of the big messages of the Fruits Basket. To keep fighting no matter how much life sucks or how unfair it is. Because that is how you can change your life for the better. But there is another side to what we see of Toru that episode. And that is how her strength is also her weakness as a character. She strives to be self-sufficient out of her desire to not be a burden to anyone else. She's doing the best she can on her own, but that's left her living in a tent when she has to stand outside holding it down so the tsunami will not blow it away. And plus, she is exhausted between her job and school. This is not a good life, or at least not one that's sustainable. And she doesn't have to keep living like this. She could ask Uo or Hana, and they would gladly let her stay with him. But because of not wanting to be a burden, she doesn't, and she suffers because of this. Shigure and Yuki eventually take her in by the end of the episode, but only because she literally collapses and cannot really object. Eventually, she does accept her kindness, but only after it's already forced on her. The message here is sort of the opposite of before, but they go together. And the message is to let yourself lean on others. It can be hard to do so, and you're not a bad person for not wanting to burden others, obviously. But the thing about friends is that they want to help you. If they know about a problem you have, friends want to fix it or make it better in any way they can. Heck, Toru's mom even tells her in episode 5 that it's okay to get discouraged and to be selfish occasionally. Even if you want to be someone who helps others, you can't do so without accepting the help that you need from time to time. And sometimes that is the only way that life can truly change. The strengths and weaknesses of Toru as a person make her really fascinating and tell us a lot. And this is just from the first episode. But all the other characters have a lot to teach us too. In all the ways the show presents their stories, they each have a little bit different message to them, though it does tie together. And when the characters embrace this, that is how their lives change for the better. Throughout the show, Toru meets the members of the Soma family who have the curse of the Zodiac. All of them are broken in some way, but through meeting Toru, many of them are able to change their lives. Change comes slow, but that's life. A person changing themselves rarely happens quickly. It's often the small steps that end up making you a different person, though, especially if you look at it over the years. We see this a lot with Yuki and Kyo throughout Season 1, though there's that whole Kyo true form thing, but I'll talk about that more later. For now, though, I want to talk about some of the impactful side characters, or at least the ones that really stood out to me from a thematic perspective. They are Kisa and Hiro. Also because Kisa is adorable. Just look at this picture of Kisa and Haru. I mean, just look at it. Kisa is best girl. I mean, there is... Toru, but Kisa is best cat. I mean, though there is Kyo. How is this cast so good? Oh wait, themes, that's what I'm talking about. Kisa is a young girl who has become mute. Due to bullying, she's locked away her words. She won't say anything. Through the episode, we learned that she was originally a bully because of her looks, and then she was ashamed of being bullied, which made everything worse. Then, while I don't know the exact timeline, Akito ended up beating Kisa so badly that it took her weeks to recover. Plus, with all this abuse comes the blame. That it's her fault. That she is a burden to her mother. Really, it's no wonder she won't talk. So how does someone like her change their life when they're like that? Well, it's like I said earlier. You have to be strong. Keep fighting, even when life is tough. That is what Kisa needs to do. Except that's completely wrong. So the other message. Lean on others. That's what Kisa needs to do. Reach out to those who love her. 
but this is also wrong. Why would she want to reach out? Everyone has hurt her. They have either blamed her, put her down, or physically abused her. Why would she trust anyone to get her out of this darkness? She has no reason to trust those close to her. And if she can't trust someone who's close to her, why would she trust strangers? Her teacher gave her a note that said, How can others love you when you can't love yourself? And this line is just so hurtful. It throws all the blame for suffering back onto Kisa. And sure, there is something to be said about loving yourself so you can connect with others. But in the state Kisa is in, that's impossible. What Kisa needs is not her own strength to keep fighting, nor is it the ability to reach out to others. No, what she needs is someone to guide her out of the darkness. And not just someone who cares about her, but someone who understands her. Someone who has been there. As Kisa is hurt by the words of the letter, Yuki is there too, and he is furious. He feels her pain. He has been there. He also stopped talking. And because of that, he's able to reach out to her. Not as someone who is pushing her to be strong through this, but as someone who understands and gets her. Because of that, she's able to speak with Yuki, and then to Toru. Kisa is able to open up and speak. Not often, but still a little bit. She's fighting in her own way, as hard as it is. But the reason she is fighting isn't because of her strength, but from the encouragement of those who love her and who have been there. The letter from the teacher asked, How could others love you when you can't love yourself? This actually reminds me of something my church pastor has said, which is that you can only love to the degree of which you have been loved. And this is so true. It is the love that others that allows us to love ourselves and then pass that along to others. So what Kisi needed here wasn't to love herself first. What she needed was to believe she was loved by others. And she found that through Yuki and Toru. And the only way that she could accept their love was by seeing that they too were in the same place as her. Because they had been in the same darkness she was, they were able to be her light to lead her out of it. And that's the message of Kisa's episode. To be the light to those stuck in the darkness. Because only then can they find the strength to change their lives. Hero's episode is another interesting one. After meeting Toru, Kisa became very attached to her and Hero is jealous. He has feelings for Kisa and wanted to help her, but he couldn't. And so he resents Toru for being the one who could actually help. This is very childish behavior, which makes sense because he is a child. Near the end of the episode, he reveals to Toru that he hates how childish he is. He wants to help Kisa, stop all the bad things from happening to her, but he has no idea how. And in his childish mind, lashing out at those around him is his best solution. Sure, it doesn't make sense. He even acknowledges it, and that's why I like Hiro so much. He is very aware of his shortcomings, and he wants to grow up so he can better help those he cares about, which I really hope we do get to see next season. Anyway, the message of Hiro's episode is pretty simple, though it's important, and that is to acknowledge our own weaknesses so we can work to improve ourselves. I also have to mention Uo, because she's Uo, and those were my favorite episodes in the show. Then again, there was episode 24, which is great, but from like a pure emotional perspective, I gotta go with Uo. Through her episodes, we saw how she became friends with Toru and ended up leaving the gang she was a part of. Those episodes were just amazing. But that's not the focus now. Instead, I want to talk about how Uo was able to get out of the gang. Throughout her time in the gang, you could see that her life was empty. But it was her life, so she accepted it. Even by meeting Toru, seeing a better life, she didn't want to change. It was almost painful for her to see Toru's life and how different it was from hers. The life that Uo had was something that she knew, despite its emptiness. Though eventually, and this took time, but she had enough. And, left the, and she left the gang. Though not without some pain in the process. Literally fighting her way out. The point of this episode is that change is not easy. There is going to be pain especially when you're making a major change in your life. When you cut something out of your life that will be for the best later on, it's going to hurt in the present. But it's so worthwhile. Uo's life turned around completely after she got out of the gang. And while she was the one who made the choice to change her life, she wasn't alone. She had Toru's friendship and Kyoko who had taken the same path as her before. And because of that, she was able to have the courage to leave the life she knew. And now the final character I want to talk about, Kyo. Actually, that's not true. I want to talk about all these characters, but I also want to get this video out in a reasonable amount of time, so I need to actually finish the script instead of getting more ideas. Anyway, 
Episode 24 is a big climax to the series. It added a bit more to the overall message. At first glance, the message is the same. And to be honest, this is why I was kind of let down by the episode at first, that it was almost predictable. But when you start looking at it closer, you start seeing the nuances to what it is saying and how perfect it is from a narrative standpoint. Anyway, the message is the same as before. In order to change your life, you have to fight through the hard times with the help of others. But with Kyo and Toru here, it's a bit more complicated. Partly because Toru is terrified of Kyo in his true form. He's scary, smells repulsive, it's no wonder people are horrified from him. But Toru goes after him regardless. Because she's Toru, and of course she does. But we see that she's scared. When she finally finds him, he wants her to abandon him striking her and sending her flying into the lake or a river or whatever that is. And at this point, Teru begins to walk away. And she has every right to do so. It would be reckless to risk getting hurt worse or maybe even killed. It is only logical to walk away. He's just too dangerous. But you know, sometimes to save a life, you have to be a bit reckless. And so she rushes toward Kyo, hugging him, telling him that she is scared, but that she wants to understand him. And that's what Kyo had wanted all this time, maybe at times even without realizing it. In this moment, someone has seen all of him, even the monstrous side that terrifies people. And that is melting the dark thoughts away. Truly loving someone isn't just ignoring the dark sides of the person, the true form that they keep hidden. No, it's seeing that, acknowledging that, but embracing them regardless. That is the message of the episode. I want to be more like these characters. No, not the whole turning into a cute animal thing, though that would be cool, but just how they are as people. Despite their flaws, they are fighting the best that they can. And despite their flaws, they are able to help each other to overcome their hardships. So, my message to you is to be like these characters. Be like Yuki, someone who is kind to those around him and trying to change his life in the small ways. Be like Kisa, speaking your mind, even when it's hard. Be like Hiro, acknowledging your faults and trying to get better. Be like Uo, breaking free from an old life no matter how much it may hurt, and bring a lead pipe to school. Be like Haru, gently watching over your friends, even if sometimes you get lost along the way. And be like Momoji, expressing love and kindness to those around you, even when you have been hurt yourself. And most of all, be like Toru. Show people the good in them that they cannot see for themselves. And that is the message of Fruits Basket, at least how I see it. Let me know what you think I missed, because there's a lot to this series. I could have kept going for a long time. And I will definitely be making more Fruits Basket content in the future. But if you want all my thoughts on Season 1, check out the podcast I did with my friend C-Tactics on his Bento channel, because there's a lot about Fruits Basket there. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you to all the friends I met talking about Fruits Basket. It has been a great experience. And I will see you next week with some video and in Season 2 of Fruits Basket.